fill offices later on. The first offices that need to be fulfilled is the school board. That takes place in April. And then the following offices, all the board meetings and congregation officers, take place in September. Is that good? Guess who's on the nomination list? You. <coughs> you all are to be nominees for the Eric's office. And I, you know, take that seriously, please. We need people to do the business of the work here at Bethesda. And you're the ones. So when your name comes up, it has been prayed off. It has been considered by the nomination committee to fulfill a position. Don't take that lightly. They think highly of you. And if they nominate you, obviously, they feel you can do the job. So when you get that letter saying you have been nominated for the board of such and such, don't throw it in the trash. Please consider it because we need your help here at Bethesda. Uh, yeah, so once again, we'll come to the Lord's meeting, and our focus here this morning is Jesus says, I will build my church, and we are the body of Christ, and each of you are part of it. And that is going to be our focus on the church here this morning. We begin with our first family. <laughs>
rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yeah, I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. 
nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with, with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to reading, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have the gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his strength. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Let, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. <laughs> Lord, I love the habitation of your house 
and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. Together, you shall have no other cause. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life from the Amen. Please be seated. And if the children would come forward, please.
gave us our life. And so today we get to say, I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church. As a matter of fact, now we're going to have some, we're going to have some congregational participation here. I'm going to say, I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church, and then I'll say together, and we'll say it together, okay? I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church. Let's say it together. I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church. See, we, he's made us. And he has not made us an organization. He's made us a body. Find that out just a bit. He made us a body. I went to a church a long time ago. And this church had a nice little flow chart about which, which, and which, Organization answered to which person, which person answered to which office, which office answered to who, and I, you know what? I couldn't follow the flow chart. When God made Bethesda Lutheran Church, it made an organization with a flow chart. It's organized, organized is good, by the way. But he made us alive. He made us alive. We are alive with Christ. We are the body of Christ. And our life consists with the life of of Christ that God and the Holy Spirit has breathed into us. And the air we breathe is not ordinary air. We breathe, breathe what's called the eighth day air, the air of the resurrection. We do not, we gather here because we know that we do not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. We partake of food that's greater than the bread of angels, the, we eat the bread of Christ. And so, what are we? We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And so, we can say together, I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church. And you know what else we get to say this morning? We get to say, I believe that Jesus built Bethesda Lutheran Church. You heard it in the gospel reading that Jesus asks who do people say that I am, and, and eventually Peter steps up and, and confesses that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says to Peter, Blessed are you, said Barjona, that means son of. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. This was not revealed to you by men, but by my Father in heaven. And I didn't have any rock, and on this I will build my church. I will build my church. I'm Christ is the Son of the living God. You know, that, that word build, I wonder if it had meaning to Jesus. Because you know what Jesus was before he started his ministry. I mean, he's always, he was always the Savior. He was born to be the Savior. But he started his ministry when uh, doing miracles and preaching and so forth that after he was baptized. But you know what he was before that? He was a carpenter. <coughs> I don't know what kind of carpenter he was, but there's a good chance that he may have been the kind of carpenter that built buildings. And so Jesus was familiar with wood, hammer, nails. So Jesus said, I will build my church. He didn't, well, yes, he did, didn't he? He did build this church with wood and nails, a little bit of blood. He built what we call the Holy Christian Church. That is, that, 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 that which is everybody a member, all those of faith in Jesus Christ are members of the Holy Christian Church, where there's life and salvation in Jesus Christ. He built that with wood and nails and his own blood. And you are a member of that through faith in Jesus Christ. But when Jesus says, I will build my church, he's not talking about a church that's just floating out there somewhere, but that holy Christian church always gives itself, always shows itself in a location. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. The church is going to have a form. And it's interesting, after Jesus ascended into heaven, you start reading the book of Acts, Peter, especially 
the Apostle Paul, others, they start going out and they start preaching, and all these people suddenly start gathering together in a location. The church, they are the church. As a matter of fact, our reading, our second reading, is to the church at Corinth, called Corinthians. This to a group of people like we're gathered here today, they would have been gathered together as a church. They were the church in that place at Corinth. They were gathered around his word. They were gathered in Jesus' name. They were gathered around the sacraments. And so they could say at Corinth, Jesus has built this church. <coughs> Just like we can say today that Jesus has made the Bethesda Lutheran Church. <coughs> so, here's where we are so far. I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church. I believe that Jesus has built Bethesda Lutheran Church. Know what that means? That we have everything necessary to be the church in this place. We lack nothing. We have absolutely everything necessary to be the body of Christ in this place. We have everything necessary to be the church in this place. We have Jesus as we gather in his name. We have his life given words in our ears and on our lips. We have his heavenly food to eat and to drink. We have a place where life and salvation and forgiveness is handed out. We have faith. We have all of that. We're not like it. Everything necessary to be the church in this place. And yet, as we look around, if we compare ourselves, I'm just going to compare ourselves to, um, to other Lutheran churches. We're different than other Lutheran churches. Even different than other Lutheran churches, Missouri Synod churches. You know why? Because we're unique. Just like when God, just like you're unique from the person sitting next to you and, and from the people sitting around you, you're unique. We're unique. We're made up of a different, God has arranged us just a little bit differently than he has any other church. And that's awesome. Because you know what's dangerous? When we as individuals, as human beings, compare ourselves to other individuals. And we say, boy, I wish I had her talent for playing basketball. I wish I had his brains to do math. I wish I had her talent for this, I wish I had his talent for that. Meanwhile, we get to look at what God has given us and our own unique talents and abilities. We can look at other churches and guess what? We can see that other churches have some pretty cool stuff. I know there are some churches that literally have Starbucks and whatever we call that back there, the narthex or the, the peninsula or whatever we want to call it. So you can all sip a little Starbucks when you come into church. There are some churches that have thousands of members. There are other churches that have maybe 10 to 15 people members. That's awesome for them. There are churches that have church on Wednesday nights, there's church on Monday nights, there's church on, on Saturday nights. They have gifts. But you know what? We have gifts. We have a school right over here, we have an early learning center right over here. We have all kinds of other gifts. We are unique, and we, we rejoice in whom God has made us. Oh, yeah. Those other churches, they have, some, they have some failings. They have some faults. Guess what? We have some failings. We have some faults because we're the church here on earth. We have, we're, we're made up of a group of sinners. A bunch of sinners gathered together around Christ. And as much as we have failings, as much as we have faults, you know what we still get to say? I believe that God has made Bethesda Lutheran Church. We get to say Jesus has built Bethesda Lutheran Church. With all our gifts, with all our flaws, we still are the church. We still have Jesus in his dying and rising in our midst. We still have faith in Christ. We still have the hope of eternal life. We still look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And so much more. We have everything necessary right here to be the church because Jesus has built us and because God has made us. And then there's the third person of the Holy Trinity. I believe 
agree that the Holy Spirit has made the Feds of Lutheran Church with all of our members to be one body. Our reading says, the body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all given one spirit to drink. We're all one. Though there's a whole bunch of us here today, different parts, we are one body. See, that's what, that's what he really wants us to see today, that we're one. We all come from different backgrounds. Some of us are from different states. Some of us are from different parts of South Dakota. And we can be from all those different places. We can be different kinds of hyphenated Americans. We can be all different. We can be all kinds of places up on the spectrum of, of middle <coughs> class. We can have outdoor jobs. We can have indoor jobs. We can be retired. We can be stayed home. We can be all kinds of things. And we can be south of town, north of town. And yet, God has made each of one of us to be one. Right here at the Thessalonian Church. We, and he makes us one because we've been all baptized that water poured over us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that gave us the Holy Spirit. Remember last week, the Holy Spirit formed with the land on Jesus? That same Holy Spirit has planted on each one of us for one, because we all have that same Holy Spirit. And we all step up, and we eat and drink. We, and of course, we, Christ is always the focus, right? We eat and drink the body and blood. But know what our reading says? That we eat and drink, we've been given one spirit to drink. The body becomes one, right there in our baptism, right there as we, as we eat and drink. We're unified. So let me return again to this. That I believe God has made the Bethesda Lutheran Church, and that, in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wants them to be. He's put you here just as he, wanted, he wants you to be. And every part of the body is important. Some of them, you know what, you notice that? There's two words that, that are important in our reading as you recognize that God has made you a part. One of them is indispensable. Did you hear that? You are indispensable to this body. The second one is honor. Every one of you, whatever your station in life, deserves honor. Not because of what you do, not because of the gifts you bring, but because of whose you are. You belong to Christ. You belong to your Heavenly Father. And you have that Holy Spirit who has made your, your, you holy, indispensable, deserving of honor. And one other thing, in towards the end here, he says that he's arranged them all so that there is no division in the body. No division in the body. That means that that you know, sometimes sometimes we want this, we want that. You know what? It's not about what we want. No division of the body. We ask, what is best for the Bethesda Lutheran Church, <coughs> the body of Christ in this place? And then finally, not only is there no division, but so that there's equal concern. If one of us suffers, we all suffer with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices. Today, here's the good news. We get to say, I believe that God has made the Bethesda Lutheran Church. We get to say, Jesus has built the Bethesda Lutheran Church. We get to say that the Holy Spirit has made us one through our baptism and by drinking at the table. And the gift today is, you're a member. You are a member of this place that God himself has built. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God who passes all understanding <coughs> hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as the life of the last day. We will now gather the offer. <coughs>
In our prayers this morning, we have a prayer for my family, the UTEC family. I have my oldest brother passed away this last week, and his funeral is going to be on Tuesday. Um, so we're going to pray for the family of uh, my family. My brother's name is Dick Soy. He was a half-brother. We're going to also pray for Angie Nellen's dad, Norm, because he's going under, undergoing tests. And we'll pray for others as well. But that is our, that those will be mentioned in our prayers this morning. Please stand and let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and a pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel, and for the calling of all the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the UTEC family, as they mourn the death of their brother Dixoy, that they would be comforted at the time of his death with the hope of the resurrection and the life of the world to come. For Angie now is dead, Norm, that they would be able to find what is the matter with him, and that he would be comforted and the, fire, and the whole family comforted as they try to find what's the matter with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Please be seated. And at this point, if the um, officers would please come forward, the newly elected officers, and, and also those of, of um, the LWML, please come forward. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Holy Scriptures tell us that the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom, and we will, return, we will turn this responsibility over to them so that we can give our full attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. Each of you has been chosen to fill specific positions of responsibility in this congregation. As such, you are to work with me, the minister of word and sacrament, that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at proper times, in accordance with the order of our church, and that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran Confessions and that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among its members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and work is the way of all who trust in Christ, 
It is especially important that you, as office bearers in this church, show yourselves by word and example to be, to be patterns of good works and Christian devotion. So therefore, in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you? And do you promise carefully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Lutheran Church, especially as you've come to know it from the small catechism? If so, answer, I do. I therefore place you as officers of the church, uh, officers at Bethesda Lutheran Church, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the Almighty, most merciful God, our, our Heavenly Father, enlighten you and strengthen you in your office, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and for the good of his people. Amen. Will the congregation please stand and let us pray for our new officers? <coughs> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have raised up these servants for working on your people. We humbly implore you to grant them, by your Holy Spirit, those gifts which they need for their faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom and strength and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people, who now retire from their time of service. And we pray that in the end of days, we with all your faithful people may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by, by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go then, in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. And you may take your seats. And congregation, please remain standing.
this morning. Is there anyone here this morning with a, with a birthday? All right, Larry's here. All right, Larry. Let, um, let's sing happy birthday, Larry Bills, this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Larry. And may God bless you. We made blessings to you, Larry. Go ahead, go ahead Doris. Uh, Cody Hagen also has a birthday, oh. but uh, they, the years left. Okay, Cody. Well, when you see Cody back there, um, say happy birthday. All right, and then we have the anniversary here in the front row. Um, Rose. Rose and Larry, and how many years? 49 years. God's blessings to both of you and many more. And with that, we're moving on to the announcements of today. And for announcements, um, oh yeah, there's a parenting class. Go ahead, Susan, tell us about parenting class. Uh, Christian Active Parenting starts this morning. I know that there's a meeting, so we will figure out how to do that after we uh, get together. <coughs> We're going to be meeting in the uh, office of the principal, right next to the uh, church office, and we'll see where we go from there. All right, thank you. And that, um, and then, um, you heard in my announcements, my, my oldest brother passed away this last week, and his funeral's in Dickinson, North Dakota, on Tuesday, and so I'll be gone here for a few days attending my brother's funeral. Any other announcements? Yes. I have two, just a reminder. The youth are serving after the meeting, so we have some egg bake and whatnot for brunch. Secondly, uh, this summer is the National Youth Gathering. Um, we've got four students that have signed up to go to Houston this summer. Um, we are looking for anybody that would love to chaperone them. I will, if no one else will. I've been to many youth gatherings. It is a great opportunity as an adult to uh, see what our youth have for us. There's you know, approximately 30,000 kids that attend this. It's a great endeavor. And if anybody feels led to want to chaperone the four to Houston, they're going to be taking a bus. You would ride along with them. I'd have everything organized for you. Um, I'd be happy to just let me know. I'll give you more details. And once again, the voting meeting is going to be taking place right here. So go ahead and get yourself a cup of coffee, get yourself um, whatever the youth are serving this morning. We're starting at 10.30 right here, all right? We're starting at 10.00. I don't know what time it is. So, yeah. um, 